When will they arrive? I am getting bored. Finally. What took you so long? I don't really know. I hopped here as fast as I could. I guess my hopping just doesn't cut it. Why did you hop here? We're the Slippy Night Society. It's too slippery out tonight for me to walk, so I had to try a different strategy to get here. That meant hopping. I forgot. It is very slippery out tonight. I tried walking but kept falling on my butt. In the end, I just kept pushing myself forward with my arms while sitting on my butt and sliding here. I should have thought of that strategy too. Oh well, well, at least I got here. The rest of the society called me up and told me that it is too slippery out for them to try coming. It'll just be us tonight. I am surprised. I would have thought that at least Quasar the genius of the group would have made it here. He can easily outsmart the slippery ground. I would think so too. He called me earlier though to let me know that he tried to use an experimental teleporter to get here and ended up teleporting to North Korea, where he was immediately arrested as a spy and with his teleporter confiscated. He only managed to call me because they didn't find his dental implant cell phone. That is too bad. I guess Quasar won't be able to make any meetings for a while, oh well. Now that all members of the Slippy Knight Society, who could make it tonight, are here, we can begin tonight's story. I call it, The Tale of the Dirty Town. I am getting scared already. Anyone would be with a title like that, okay, I will start now. It was an ordinary day for Glenn Kbujer Sip. He was finishing his shift in the town's coal factory and whistling while he worked, as usual. He was in his natural cheery mood. Glenn sounds like a fun guy. Yep. So anyway, Glenn clocked out and went to go wash the coal off of his face. But there was no soap in the dispenser. He didn't think much of it and went to try another dispenser. It was out too. Then he tried another dispenser, and another, and another, and eventually, he had tried all of the soap dispensers in the coal factory, every single one of them was out of soap. I can't believe it. I would think that a business as big and dirty as a coal factory would have to have some soap somewhere at all times for the workers to wash up. Yep. That is normally the case. Because of this anomaly, Glenn felt that something strange was going on, but he decided it was fine. He would just wash up at home. He went home and went to his bathroom to take a shower. He knew that he had recently been to the store and stocked up on soaps and shampoos so that he could take plenty of those long showers that he loved to take nine times a day. You see, Glenn was actually aspiring to be a germaphobe. He reminds me of myself. Tee hee. Yeah, he is pretty similar to you. Anyway, he got in the shower, closed the shower curtain, and turned on the water like normal. Everything was going fine. That's good. I want him to be clean finally. He needs it. That wasn't the case though. He reached for his bar of soap, but it wasn't there. He started to worry slightly but figured he should have his bottle of body wash still. When he tried it though, it was empty. He panicked and tried to use his body wash slash shampoo, but it was empty too. Glenn was really panicking now. Frantically, he tried to use his face wash and shampoo. Either would do. He just wanted to be clean. Both were empty. Oh no. Yes, it was becoming a tragedy for Glenn, just as it would be for you. So, Glenn, in his panicked state, ran out of his shower. He quickly searched his bathroom but found no soap in the cabinets, near the sink, or anywhere. He became even more panicked and ran around his whole house, still wearing what he would for a shower, looking for anything in his house to clean his body, and guess what? There was no soap? Exactly. I'm ashamed for Glenn of his next actions, but I'll have to say it. He ran outside, without putting anything on, and started to run from house to house, knocking on the doors and screaming, I need soap. I need soap. Give me soap. Even just a scrap. I'm such a dirty dirty man. Give me soap. I'm so dirty. Oh so dirty. Some people yelled out their windows that they couldn't find any soap. However, some people called the cops on Glenn rather than looking for soap, 
and soon he was arrested by the cops. Oh no. Glenn's too frail to survive in jail. You're exactly right, luckily for Glenn. The cops thought so too. Adding that to how he was acting, they felt it would be best to send him to a hospital's mental ward instead and have him restrained. That's good. They did have some soap, however, it was only the soap that they kept locked up in their storerooms. They couldn't seem to find the rest of their soap. Because of their low supply of soap, Glenn was deemed a low priority for soap use and so did not get washed. I don't know if I can take much more. This is horrifying. Indeed, it is horrifying. It was horrifying enough that Glenn's adrenaline surged, and he managed to break free of his restraints. Stealthily, yet frantically, he snuck throughout the hospital, trying to find an unlocked storeroom. And eventually he did find an unlocked storeroom, but when he snuck in, there was a small bald man, so clean that he was shining, and he was taking all of the soaps and gulping down the liquid ones while eating the solid ones in single bites. Eek. I am so very frightened that I have lost control over some bodily processes. I'm sorry. I thought you could handle this story. I can. Get on with the story. If you say so. So, the little man saw Glenn and just stared at him with a grin, while he finished off the soaps. Then he ran past Glenn, out of the storeroom. Glenn was no longer completely sane at this point. The little man had pushed him over the edge, and he was not sane enough to be frightened. Because of this fact, he chased after the little man, with Glenn chasing the little bald man. The two quickly ran out of the hospital and out into a large, empty field. The little bald man reached the center and jumped into the air. The little man floated in the air for a second and then shot straight up into the air and disappeared. Where did he go? You'll find out. Like you, Glenn wanted to know where the little man went. So Glenn went to the center of the field and jumped. Just like the little bald man, Glenn floated in the air for a second and then shot straight up into the air. Suddenly, Glenn lost sight of the field and the rest of his town below him. Instead, he saw a pile of what looked like yellow soap beneath his feet. He looked around him and realized that he was in a room that appeared to be made of many types of soap. Scattered around the room were more little shiny bald men. Glenn then spotted the little man he followed. The little man was standing in front of a large pool that was made out of bar soap and filled with many different types of soap. I don't believe you. Who ever heard of a place made of soap? For one, Glenn has heard of a place made of soap. Without any further interruptions I will continue. Okay. I'll let you see if you can convince me of this place that is a room made of soap and full of tiny bald men who are so clean that they are shiny. Alright. You will be convinced. Glenn watched as the little man he followed suddenly opened his mouth and let a stream of various soaps come out and land in the soap pool. Glenn, confused but unafraid due to his loss of sanity, ran up to the little man and tapped him on his shoulder after no more soap was exiting his mouth. The little man turned around and said, Why, hello there Glenn. We really appreciate the large quantity of soap that you had stockpiled. Our efforts are likely to succeed in large part due to you. We are almost ready, Glenn became even more confused. However, due to being around soap, Glenn's sanity was returning, and he was capable of thinking clearly enough to ask what the little man meant and who he was. The little man then said, We are collecting soaps to power our ship. We crash landed on your planet last night and are in a hurry to get back to our planet known as Oopness. I, along with the rest of my species, am an Oopmesnian. We are a species that consists of soap-like substances and build everything out of soaps. Our ship's parts are made of various soaps, while our fuel is also a soap. In fact, our planet is a soap planet, and so we only know how to work with soap. Our ship is a pleasure liner owned by royalty. The prince is on board. He was taking a vacation before his cremation tomorrow. He becomes king. Glenn started to feel empathy and admiration for the Oopmesnians as he couldn't dream of a better planet than one made of soap and felt that any deed done in the name of supporting soap was important. He fell at the feet of the little man, weeping, and cried out, Oh Mesnians, I have always dreamed of living in a world where soap was everywhere I looked. You are so lucky, and I will do anything I can to help you. 
May I please join you on your journey back to Oabiz and become one of you? All of the Oabmesnians stopped what they were doing and stared at Glenn. They all started to laugh, which made Glenn start to get sad, figuring that they thought he was stupid to consider the possibility of him joining them. However, after a few laughs, in unison, they all said, Of course Glenn. We have plenty of room for soap lovers. Half an hour later, the ship blasted off with Glenn aboard. The soap that was used to fuel the blast off rained down upon Glenn's hometown and cleaned everything up. The town was cleaner than ever, and Glenn got to live on his ideal planet. This concludes the first story of, and the first meeting of, the Slippy Knight Society. In the end, this story was not so scary. It was a happy ending for everyone. It wasn't a happy ending for me. Why not? Because I don't get to go to Oropmas too. I want to live there. I love soap.